So I'm sitting here reworking the advancements to try and make them flow better from a gameplay perspective. Because again, this is, this is how you're meant to learn about the pack. And I, I just realized I've never really sat down and explained exactly what this data pack is. So I think we'll just spend a little bit of time today just talking, right? And I will explain everything there is so far and essentially what I'm trying to achieve with the data pack. Now we don't have to worry about that, right? Because I can, I can destroy whatever I want and this place is all nice and self-regenerating. But anyway, let me just finish what I was doing and we will quickly then, well, not quickly, probably quite slow and quite talkative, explain what's going on with the data pack rune chant. So, hey everyone, I'm Clue, and this is the data pack rune chant. Well, this is, this is part of the data pack, and I've been working on this for probably the last year, a bit, bit longer than that. Right, it started off as a command block world, just a RPG map that I was trying to make, and it has since progressed into this, which is quite large, and there's a lot to go over, so let's actually, for once, explain what this pack is. So, my whole purpose of this pack was to transform Minecraft into a, a version of the game that I wanted to play, right? A, a version with a lot more emphasis on, you know, fun, interesting RPG elements, essentially a big expansion to survival Minecraft. And since then it has sprouted into quite the large pack. Now, each of these tabs are essentially the different branches right, that the pack has has made. So we have, for instance, the basics, then we have brewing, we have worldly discoveries, rare oddities, physical arts, the enchanter's nexus, which is where we are right now, right? And this is all the progression revolving around this area. Then we also have labyrinth of the first. This is probably the last feature I will work on. So it is bare, but then we also have manipulating shulk and rune chanting. Now there are also a lot of features not listed here because essentially what I, I did for the longest time was I just made features, right? Anything I thought was cool, a spell system I, I made, and then we've been backtracking and connecting the dots and, and turning it into a functional data pack. So for instance, everything is, is technically accessible and you can play with all manner of these different features. You just lack the knowledge, right? You don't have any instructions on where to go and what to do. So that hopefully what I'm trying to do now is rework the advancements so that they lead into one another a little bit better. So we'll start off with the progression that I have out in mind. So we have Rune Chain is basic. So nice and simple, don't worry too much about what they actually say, I'll explain them, but I do have to rework a lot of them to give a little bit better information, again, to connect those dots. But basically this is the, the advancement tab that you would start with when you load up the data pack. Now, currently I believe you have a lot of them unlocked. It doesn't look like this. You still have access to the Nexus, but this will be the next big update that I want to do. So in here, we have a bunch of different things. We have resources. So for instance, we have these fragments. As you can see, they say found by doing X, right? So this one is found by defeating mobs, harvesting crops, fishing, mining, and enchanting items. So basically I've added in a whole bunch of collectible resources that you gain from doing day-to-day -day activities, and then they will then be used for different features in the pack. We also have a few different multi-block structures, which are nice and neatly all put into this tab, multi-block structures, but for now, right, you discover them as you go through the different branches. So in this basic tab, we have the Enchanter's Crucible, and we also have the Deep Slate Furnace. So this tells you how exactly to make it the structure. So we have layer one, two, and three. So it's a three tier structure and you can place all the blocks and then you can craft with it. So for instance, in this one, we can make our pink shiny rocks, which actually allow us to teleport to the Nexus as well as some tinkerers. So we have my own version of tinkerers using the, the attributes within the game. So that is one other path to explore. So, so far we have new crafting, new multi-block structures, tinkerers, right? And that's just this tab. We can then go to the next one, which is the Nexus. So the pink shiny rock then leads to the Nexus branch, which here you have to work to restore the Nexus. And then once it's up and running, you will have a bunch of villager traders. Now, what I want to do is have the villagers essentially unlock the knowledge void. So you can trade with them and you can unlock the different advancements and that will help guide you in the direction you want to go. In saying that, this will not gate any of the features of the pack. If you know what you're doing, then you can go nuts and you can do whatever you want with the pack's features. However, the information will be locked behind the villages. Okay, so it's not needed to actually use the features, but it will help you progress in a, a more guided manner. So for instance, you can see like Zelric the, the water and he has this little icon. So that means his whole branch is connected to this one, right? Manipulating shock. And then we have like Greycore, the, the metallurgist, and that's connected to physical arts over here. So they will all have those 
those knowledge nodes, right, through items. So you buy the item and unlocks the advancements for these different tabs. In fact, the tabs in themselves, I will lock behind them. So that way, as soon as you enter the world, you're not bombarded with all these different tabs to explore. You'll just have the basics. Once you get to the Nexus, you'll have the Nexus. And once you start progressing through the villages, you will unlock these different tabs. Now, what about the tabs? Because this is where we get a little bit crazy. We'll start with worldly discoveries. So, oh, it's cut off. I, I got to work on that too, because placement of advancements is very random. Uh, it's slightly cut off, but it's not fully cut off. So it says, it seems the energy of the world has unlocked the potential of mobs. They may now randomly activate their own abilities. Passive mobs have two different abilities, neutral three and hostile four. Then we also have some villager stuff and seasons. So seasons were one of the big features. Now, these these features are basically inherent, right? So any mob you come across, actually, oh, that's interesting. So if I scroll all the way up, then it's bad. But yeah, so you come across any mob, they can now use these different abilities, right? So I've, I've modified a bunch of core aspects of the game. So all mobs now have active abilities, right? So I think a husk can throw sand at you, for instance, to blind you. Uh, zombies have some more infectious stuff. And again, just everything is, is tried to try to have a bunch more RPG elements. That's the main goal I'm trying to go with, right? So we have mob abilities and we have a whole branch of seasons. So depending on the biome you're in and the time, there is a, a inbuilt cycle, time cycle, right? Using scoreboards, a different season will be apparent. And depending on the season, you know, different things will happen. So this says, affected biome cause exhausting heat and dangerous eruptions. And count to that, we have exhausting heat and harsh flames, but it's also burning cavern and scorching heat. So for instance, in a season where you're in this little fire season, right? On the surface, you'll have scorching heat. And then in a cavern, so underground, you'll have burning. And all of them sort of work like that. They have the duality where something happens underground, something happens above the surface. And essentially my, my goal is to make the player want to transition between different biomes and also between you know doing activities on the surface and doing activities underground. Because you don't want to really go on a big mining spree once you're afflicted with some of these, these bad seasons that affect the underground. Now they're not all bad seasons, right? Green is, is awfully nice. So they all just give you slight little buffs. So affected biomes cause increased regeneration, cause light life infused energy to sprout in the area, cause increased replenishment and vegetation growth, and cause surges of energy amongst the inhabitants. So for instance, when a biome is affected by these seasons, you probably want to find it and do a lot of activities within those biomes. Now, after that, we shall go to Runic Brewing, right? So there is a bunch of new potion mechanics. I have these wax ball flasks, right? I think I call them copper waxing flasks. Uh, yes, no, just copper flasks. And what they do, as it says here, is it will apply effects to your main hand, enabling attacks to apply different status effects. So essentially just in this little branch, I have added what, seven, 14, 28 different status effects for you to be able to craft and then apply to different enemies, right? So we have, again, a lot of features here. And it, yeah, it just shocked me that I've never really done a proper rundown of what is available currently. And then we also have brewing. So we have potion dispersal. You can now take a potion you brew, throw it into a boiling cauldron and disperse it into the environment. You can then also brew your own potions using some flowers. These are sort of low grade potions, a way to slot in between going to the nether, getting a, a brewing stand, blaze powder, and then crafting proper potions. And then you also have the tier above. So this is enhancing potions where you can add special modifiers to existing potions. So for instance, Berserk, Caster, Ranger, uh, Champion, Guardian, Charming, Cleansing, and Coward. And then we also have um, the Nexus Brewing, right? So there's three different ways to now, now tackle potions. So they we've got these Amethyst potions that you can only craft here in the Nexus. Then we have Rune Chanting, and this is the spell system. So you can actually craft spell tomes, attach these different charms to them. So you can have, you know, a multi-layered spell using different charms. And then from that, we can take it a bit further. Uh, I'm going the wrong way because it's down the bottom. We have three different spell tomes. So we have a sort of beneficial one, a buffing one, and a damaging spell tome. And again, just these segmenting branches for you to explore and try out. Now, obviously there is a lot of, of knowledge and information to unpack. That's why I really need to, to work on the advancements so that it is a lot more guiding. But on the other side of rune chanting, we also have rune crafting. So you can craft placeable runes that you can then place 
in to item frames and when something walks over it, then they, they activate. So for instance, we have normal item frames. These will activate when anything goes on top of it. And then we also have glow item frames, which are a bit more fun for PVP or, or creating, you know, beneficial runes just for you to activate because they will only activate when a player touches them. And then in here in itself, we have, was it six, 24 different runes for you to be able to make and utilize all with their own, you know, special passive effects that you will have to try out to learn about. But then with each of these systems, these are also a new form of crafting. So for instance, to craft spell tones, you have to use the spell altar. And to craft these runes, you have to use the enchanter's crucible. Then we have manipulating shulk, which while well, I haven't added in the advancements is probably another really comprehensive one because this is how we buff weapons. You can, you can customize weapons with these special hearts that you find, and then they will have special attacks and abilities. But not only that, there are two branches, one where you can add these, these abilities to it, and one where you can add these passive effects to it using these crystals that you find. So you have the hearts for those, those abilities, and then you have these crystals to actually add passive effects to them. And then in the physical arts, again, we have tinkering, which is done through these different tinkering templates, but then you also have different trims. So you can now use these special leathers that you will find off of different entities. So for instance, horse, hoglin, donkey, cow, camel, right? And you can use them to add a unique trim to an item, which will then give a different bonus. And then speaking of that, probably the, the most popular data pack I have is to do with the changes to, to trimming, right? I added all different manner of effects for the different trims that you apply, the patterns, and then the material that you use. So materials give attributes, right? And they're all listed here. And then the actual patterns give different effects depending on which one you use. So that was all stemming from this pack. We also have a few different things you can do with brushes, right? You can create a different brush for the whole archeology span expanse, right? Again, to actually make it a bit more beneficial to go out hunt and search and then do the suspicious sand grind, which to me is, is really, really needs to be explored more because it is just a, a real slog to get through. So hopefully this helps with that. Basically you can take these different fur brushes and they will net you additional loot, right? Depending on which brush you use. And nice and simple, drop a brush, spider silk and three fur tufts onto a fletching table to upgrade the brush. Now, obviously there are a bunch of new items that I'm also showcasing here. If we go to rare oddities, I've given every single mob in the game a unique drop similar to the Wither Skull, right? So for instance, all the different villages and illages drop their own unique totems, right? We have the unique leathers. We have, you know, special food items. So squid tentacles, glow squid tentacles, big fish. Uh, what else do we have? We have different forms of rotten flesh, all with unique effects, depending on, you know, which one you get and which one you eat. Some unique bones, those fur tufts we just talked about. And there's just all manner of additions with this pack. So I hope this, this helps clarify it a little bit, right? This is a huge pack that I've been working on for the better half of the year. It is accessible. You're all welcome to play it and test it again. It's not finished, right? But while a lot of the features are done, I have to connect the dots. I have to smooth them all out and make sure that it is a bit more intuitive and people can you know, understand and play with it. Uh, one of the other big features that isn't listed here is bosses. Right, so bosses will probably show up in the worldly discoveries because you'll usually just find them out in the open. They'll all have unique drops and then that leads to passive abilities, which I have showed off on the channel before, right? Again, almost every feature that I want for the pack is done. It's just not, not in the advancements because it does take a little bit of time to write out the advancements and again, make sure that they flow well and they're all you know easy to understand. I've, I've done the wording the best I can to make sure you understand what you have to do and yeah, Hopefully that, that sounds a little bit better than just the come try and see and not really know what's what's going on. Anyway, I think I'll do. Hope you enjoy. See ya.